Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Webinar Wednesday. Um, really excited for today's webinar. Uh, we have guest speakers from Brassfield and Gorey. Um, I will introduce everyone in a moment. But before we walk through the agenda, I do want to note that a recording of this, this call will be shared with everyone that's currently on the line and then those that couldn't join but did register. Um, we will be opening up the floor for questions at the end of today's presentation, but feel free to type in questions as you have them in the chat box or the Q&A box, and we will do our best to address them. We do have a couple of people um, from the customer success team here at Open Space that will be doing their best to answer some questions, um, but we'll go ahead and get started. Really excited for today. We're going to go through introductions of these Brassfield and Gorey members, and then Jordan will be sharing a little bit about Brassfield and Gorey, and then... Each of these individuals, Pauline, Andrew, and Jordan, will be talking about a project where they use open space on and the benefits that they've received from open space, um, as well as just more information about the project, because they're all really, really cool. Um, and then at the end, we'll open it up for questions. I know we have a combination of people on the line today, whether you're on the field team and the design team, um, construction technologists, saw a couple of those. So thank you all for joining. So first, I'm Georgie. Some of you I recognize and have met before, but I'm on the customer success, customer success team. I'm in Richmond, Virginia. I love being a part of these webinars because it gives me a chance to learn a little bit more about our customers, um, all of the amazing, amazing things that they're doing. I love learning about the construction industry, industry and continue to learn so much from our customers. So today on the line, we have, and, and they'll be speaking shortly, um, but I'm going to introduce each of them. So we have first Pauline. Um, she was actually featured as a Pathfinder on LinkedIn, and you'll be able to learn more about her through our Pathfinder program. Please read up on our website. Uh, but Pauline is a Pensacola-based BDC coordinator at Brassfield and Gorey, and she's our newest Pathfinder, as I just mentioned. So Pauline first became interested in construction when she was in middle school. Her older brother, I believe he's about 10 years older, came home one day with a set of plans and Pauline th thought that they were, quote, the coolest thing, like a mixture of art and math. Um, so Pauline began her career in, career in construction as an estimator, then moved on to be a PM, and now she's on the design team. She's been at Brassfield and Gorey for four years, and a fun fact about Pauline is that she has dual citizenship to Greece, which is really cool. It's a small island in Greece, right? And then Jordan. Jordan is a superintendent with Brassfield. He is born and raised in Birmingham where he currently lives. And similar to Pauline, Jordan got into construction through family ties and he began wiring houses in high school. So that's where it all began. He went to Auburn, got a degree in civil engineering and hated it. So he got back into construction after doing licensed engineering. And a fun fact about Jordan that I think is really, really cool is that he's an adventure junkie. He loves to go skydiving. And then his next goal is to go helicopter skiing, which is slightly terrifying, but also amazing. And then last, but definitely not least, Andrew. Andrew is a BDC coordinator, just like Pauline with Brassfield and Gorey. He's originally from Texas, from Houston, and he works out of the Birmingham office. He got into construction because he likes buildings. I think there's more to dissect there, but he really likes buildings, so he got into it from there. And then his fun fact is that he loves hockey. So he's a big a Penguins team. So if there are any other Penguins fans out there, let us know. And then we'll get to hear from more from them in just a moment. Uh, but first, I'd like to pass it over to Jordan. Jordan, if you were, if you will, I know you've been with Brassfield for a really long time, so would love to learn a little bit more about Brassfield and Gorey. Yeah, so Brassfield and Gorey is a general contractor, primarily based in the Southeast United States. Um, founded in 1964, so we've been in business for close to 60 years. We've done business across the entire continental US, US of A, with the exception of a few states you can see on there. Um, close to $4 billion in annual revenue this year, um, 14 market sectors. I am in the federal market sector, um, but we're also a very large self-performed contractor. So. Um, we, we have the ability to get ourselves out of the pickle if uh, we have partners that can't perform. Um, so yeah, that's kind of still our office that we're out of, primarily Southeast moving towards open to new offices in Texas. We got some other stuff starting up on the East Coast, I believe so I'm soon. And if you go to the next slide, you'll kind of see what market sectors we perform work in. Um, we built the 
Braves Stadium in Atlanta, do a ton of healthcare, uh, built Airbus and Mobile. I have worked on several nuclear coal dams, so a lot of energy projects. And like I said, I'm currently in federal, so you can get a little idea of the market sectors we're in right there. Great, thank you, Jordan. Perfect. So now we're going to be hearing about hearing from Pauline about this project that she has been working on. Uh, it's Brent Lane Hospital in Pensacola, Florida. Um, and first, would love to hear a little bit about this project. So if you could give some history on it, um, share a little bit more insight into it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so like Georgie said, this is a hospital in Pensacola, Florida, uh, through Baptist Healthcare. And it sits on a site of about 57 acres. So it's a pretty, pretty large plot of land, which we're very fortunate to have makes, as I'm sure you all know, construction a little bit easier when you've got that extra space. Um, but it's consisted of a hospital, a medical office building and a central energy plant. So kind of three little pieces right now with a lot of future expansion um, planned for later on down the road. And I've been down here for a little over a year and construction got started just before that. So we've been going on um, about a year now down here and it'll end in fall of 2023. So it's a pretty long-term project, um, but we are very lucky. And then one thing that's kind of unique, but I think getting more common um, after these past few years is that our team is actually spread out all across the Southeast. So we've got both from the contractor and the architecture side, we've got people in Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, Alabama, kind of all over collaborating. Um, so I know that's kind of the first point is virtual visibility. And I think a lot of people appreciate this about open space, um, but it has been huge for us is that we've had the capability to share our job site progress um, with everybody else on our team without A, having to take thousands of pictures and send those over, but also without them having to spend the time and the money and the energy to travel down as frequently as they would like to. So open space has kind of helped us build that bridge a little bit. And I think that'll be a pretty common theme throughout mine and probably the other speakers as well later on today. Yeah, definitely. So first and foremost, just being able to that virtual visibility aspect, being able to have meetings with the design team. Um, you know, do, you, do you do those all remotely and just share your screen with open space or what does that look like for you? I know you mentioned you do a lot of mock-up reviews virtually. Yes. Um, so we actually granted everyone on the design team access to open space so that they have their own account um, really has has just kind of taken down those barriers of communication between us. So even before meetings, when we're not sharing it live, everybody has the ability to go in and look and kind of see what's been put in the field, um, especially this is a design build project. So we get a lot of drawing revisions pretty frequently on this job site. Um, so that's given both us and our architect the ability to go in, see what works already in place and hopefully minimize some of those cost impacts um, and try to find creative solutions around those based on their knowledge that they get from open space. So that's that's been huge for us in the design build process. Great. And then I'd love to talk about split view, which is a feature within open space that we're actually seeing right here in this image. Split view allows users to cut their view in half and look at the same location, but over two different dates. Um, I know, you know, we had talked earlier about a couple different instances where split view really came in handy for you uh, with bathroom pods and Let's start there with the bathroom pods. Yes, um, so our job utilizes prefabricated bathroom pods, um, anywhere from five to 30 a piece per level, um, and that's over a 10, 10 story tower of the hospital. And we're basically responsible since we are self-performing some of the concrete for having those pod depressions ready and accurate, good to go before the pods, months early before the pods even get delivered on site. Um, and Basically, if you've ever worked with pods, you know that if those depressions aren't right, you're either going to be spending money to chip away at them or to fill them with grout. So you want to get those as tight as tight as you possibly can just to minimize those added cost impacts. And open space gives the ability, and you can kind of see it right here, but we'll go on our pre-slab pour walks before every single slab pour. Um, exactly. And it takes five to 10 minutes max. It's not a lot of time. Anyone can do it. It doesn't have to be me on site. Um, and we'll go and walk those slab pours. And then we'll be able to compare back and forth to see, hey, were the depressions in the right place? Even before the time comparison, we'll go to our BIM viewer 
and compare with our actual model so that, hey, are these pods oriented correctly? We actually, we had one that wasn't one time, that's why I say that when a crew had gotten switched halfway through a bore. Um, but it's, like I said, five to 10 minutes and it gives us the ability to have an as-built, essentially a live as-built of what your rebar, your beams, embeds, roof anchors, pod depressions, all of that looks like. So that's been huge for us too. And along that point, I think something that you mentioned that I found found really interesting is open space can be a really helpful alternative to drones. Can you can you share a little bit more about why you think that? Yes. Um, so when we were on our slab on grades, we had been, instead of doing open space, had been flying the drone, just a small map of each slab port, essentially for the same reasons. Um, but as we started going up, power cranes got put on site, just construction got a little bit messier. Um, and the wind were down on the coast in Florida, so weather conditions too, the drone wasn't always a feasible option versus open space, nine times out of 10 was, unless it was a torrential downpour. So right. that allowed us to still get these pre-pour inspections essentially for us done without having to worry about those external conditions and factors. Thanks, Pauline. And then um, for those of you who, not, who maybe have not used the split view feature, just so you can see above the zoom in, there's this kind of looks like a window or a book it says split view. So you can hear, press that, cuts your view in half, and then you can change the date on either side. And really just compare. Thank you. And then the last point I wanna talk about with you regarding this project, Pauline, is sheet view, which is a different way of viewing captures within open space. Um, I thought this was really cool that you you mentioned you use sheet view when you're designing your walking paths or when you're, you're figuring out the walking paths that need to be taken within open space. Um, so before you get into that, I just want to show what, what sheet view is. So above the captures, sheets here, it's just a different way of looking at your captures. So we have this timeline at the very bottom um, where we can see all of the dates when there have been captures on this project. We're currently on a vertical view, um, and then we can also switch it to a grid layout. So Pauline, let's hear a little bit about how you and the team use this to design your, your walking paths. Mm -hmm. So this was particularly helpful, and you can even see at the very top level for use this sheet. We had, some, <laughs> we had a couple iterations um, just between the design changes, but also figuring out the best way to orient it. Um, and this has just been a really clean, easy way to be able to look at really the big picture and then figure out how we're gonna organize it for the week. Um, because our site is so large, we don't walk the entire site every day. We essentially do an hour or two of walking every day. So then at the end of the week, we have a holistic view. Um, but this kind of gives us that planning area essentially to be able to make that work. Um, and you can see we have a mock-ups page. We requested that our architect send us Thank you for pulling that up, um, but send us a little drawing of our mock-up space that we built in a warehouse. Um, and that was really for them to be able to go in before they flew down to Pensacola um, to see if there was any big ticket items that we could go ahead and fix on the front end. So that was an unexpected, I remember I called, I think, Anthony or someone from Open Space to see how we can make that work. And yeah. essentially, as long as you have a sheet, you can walk anywhere. It doesn't have to be within the footprint of the job site. So that was another kind of cool way we were able to pull open space in to our design team review. I think that makes a lot of sense. Thank you for sharing. Perfect. Thank you, Pauline. All right, so now we're gonna transition and we'll hear from Jordan about this USCH Charlotte project. So Jordan, would you be able to, to share a little bit about the project? So let's hear about the history and um, tell us about this project. Okay, so this is a U.S. federal courthouse in Charlotte, North Carolina, that was built in 1915. We just completed a uh, an addition to the annex. Everybody moved out of the, the courthouse. We're renovating now, and they're in the the annex. So this courthouse, like I said, was built in 1915, added onto in 1933, and so we're doing a complete gut and remodel, updating all the systems. You see in that picture right there, we demoed out a uh, 60 by, well, roughly about 10,000 square foot section of the roof to get a new courtyard in and build it back. So a lot of historical areas in this would remain. So it's kind of kind of tricky and uh, a lot of redesign. 
Definitely. And I know when we spoke earlier, it was really important for you to, to have open space to be able to document what the site looked like when you when you received it. So uh, we're going to talk about that in a moment. I'm going to share this project and we're going to talk about field notes, uh, but being able to see and show what it looked like previously and then talk about a few instances in, in, in which you were able to document damages, um, you know, being able to see the current state, what it looked like previously and what it looks like now. So let's talk about that specifically with field notes. Um, field notes, for those of you that don't know, field notes are a light quality control tool. Um, they're really flexible. They can be used in a lot of different ways. They're common for punch items, uh, cleanup notices, and Jordan used these heavily to document you know, damages, uh, original damages on this site. Um, so tell me a little bit about this process for you, Jordan. You would walk well, the site. Yeah, I, I don't know how many people on here have come into a building to remodel it, but you know, you could take a million pictures of the job before you go in there. And then when you go back to look for that picture, you, you don't know what folder it's in or where to find it. So in field notes, you can go on here and just click on the plan view of where it is, where your drawings are. So it's really easy. So like, if I had a damage in this room or something afterwards, I wouldn't have to go look through 5,000 pictures or if people know me, probably 100,000 pictures to find the month we started in the room and all that kind of stuff. So we use field notes to geotag the damaged locations prior to us starting work. So at the end of the job, if there's a issue or concern, we can say, hey, yeah, we did do that. Or no, we didn't do that. It's been like that since before we got here. So, um, I think that's huge. And would you do, would you take these field notes during your walk or would you take your capture and then walk around? No, I took these during the walk. During your walk. So as I was walking to the building, right when we mobilize or before we mobilize, I take them on the walk. And did you find that that, that was pretty easy? I, I think it's nice that you can take oh, those yeah. field notes during the walk. Yeah, it's, it's really easy. Just With your up. camera on. Yeah. You take it on your phone, your camera's on your hard hat, and then you take all these with your phone. So, and, and another thing, like your uh, camera quality is sometimes affected by the, the lights. So if you have your phone, uh, you can get really up close and get like a really high resolution picture of something that will be on field notes. Thanks, Jordan. Um, a couple other things that we, we spoke about, uh, you know, you do existing conditions review with the owner. I think, you know, there was a lot of time saved. Um, and then also, this just helping with your project schedule. Would you be able to speak on, on both of those like from a time savings perspective and also just keeping everyone honest when it comes to the project schedule? Oh yeah, so the owner, I mean, we have a weekly design coordination meeting. So it's like I said, this building was built in 1915, has terracotta walls, nothing is, nothing was really as is what we thought it was. So it's really easy to get them on the phone and say, hey, pull up up the space, go to this room, let's look at it right now, make a decision. So that saves an infinite amount of time. So if I need to do something right now, I don't have to wait on the architect to come out, the structural engineer, anything, they hop on here and take a look at it and make a decision to keep rolling. Um, another great thing for this is from a field perspective, it keeps everybody honest. So I'll have three or four times in this job that somebody will say, hey, I didn't start because you aren't ready. And I'll pull up open space and like, all right, let's figure this out. You know, hop on your computer and, you know, was I ready or not ready? I'll go to the date, spin around 360 degree photo and be like, look, man, I was ready. Right. You know, nine nope. times out of 10, I was right. But one time it got me too, right? I wasn't ready. So um, it works both ways. So it's it's been really helpful for transparency to the owner and the trade partners you work with. So. Let them know when you tell them that you're going to be ready, that you're ready because they can hop on there and look to see where you're at. Huge. Thanks, Jordan. And then I did want to ask you know, if you had one recommendation to someone who is about to start using open space and capturing for the first time, what would that be? It can be, you know, the walking path that you take, how fast you go. Do you have any, any tips or tricks when it comes to that? Yeah. So the one thing that I tell people that are starting, like, you don't want to walk close to the wall. It's like, well, this is a little different. So this building's already built. So if you're doing a new building, it wouldn't matter. But once you start getting the walls going up, you want to kind of stay toward the center of the room because once you get close to the wall, it's like you're, you're right up on the wall. So if you, if you walk the room, kind of try to stay in the middle of the hallway or the middle of the room, because I've had some captures where I walked that I wasn't really paying attention to what I do. And uh, you, 
super close to the wall, then you're you, you can't see what you're looking at. Right. So you so gotta remember it's 360 degrees. So you don't have to get super close to something. Right. No, I know. I, I think a lot of people think at first that they need to look up or look down or left or right, yeah. but it's everything is going to be captured. So keeping your head level is the best. Um, and if you're doing an in-wall inspection, you think you gotta get super close to the wall, but it's actually yeah. the opposite. The closer you get to the wall, it's harder to see what's in the wall. Yeah, so. that's really good advice. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Jordan. Okay. So last but not least, sorry for making you last on the introductions and the project, Andrew, but um, that's all good. We'll go in and this is a really cool project as well. The Protective Stadium. Give us some background on this, please. Yeah, so Protective Stadium is a uh, 45,000 seat football stadium um, in downtown Birmingham, which was really huge um, to get it in a nice central location in downtown. Um, it was a big thing. Um, and Basically, it's uh, a multi-use field, really, um, for concerts and all sorts of things. Um, but it was uh, key in getting the uh, UAB football team a home field, especially now that they uh, they came back uh, from not having a football program for a couple of years. Um, so it was really nice to, to be able to give them a, a home field that was right next to campus, basically. Yeah. Uh, I I enjoy just going through the captures and looking at the progress. Um, it's really cool. We're going to show the project in just a moment. Um, we'll actually go ahead and do that now. I want to talk with you about design changes because I know that this is where really where, where open space really came in handy. Um, the room that we're looking at now, Andrew's going to give us an example, but we had spoken earlier and he had shared that there were quite a few design changes. Um, and this open space was key with, with these design changes. And, you know, saving everyone some time and resources. So let's talk about, about where we are now um, in this specific room. I know that you had to do some inventive routing here. Yeah, so um, like you're saying, it was very, very key in uh, communicating with our design team, especially the majority of this project uh, occurred during COVID. Um, so really having our, our you know, design partners and ownership spread across multiple states um, with travel not an option, this was, super, super integral to uh, the owner and the, uh, the design team being able to actually look at things uh, in the real world through open space. So in these box suites um, in the press tower, we originally had a, an overhead coiling door there where you see kind of the, um, the window panes to the left. Um, and then the owner wanted to switch it to a segmented track door um, as you can see in the in the capture, and we had already coordinated this area um, using you know Navisworks and all of that, and so we had our sprinkler heads in the center of the room. But the track, since it was an overhead coiling door, um, adding that track in basically whenever that door was open would seal off the head of that sprinkler pipe from actually sprinkling the room. So being able to uh, show them that in real life of where, you know, where we had everything um, was really big. And since they couldn't get out there themselves to, you know, kind of do regular walks, this was a, a huge communication tool. Um, we had a couple other areas where, you know, walls shifted, um, things like that, pipes moving in walls, um, just to kind of communicate the, the real world, you know, situations to our design team. Thanks, Jordan. Um, would love to also talk about field notes with this project. Um, if we go in, I know you use these a lot for, for caulk joint and just safety, but could you, could you speak on how these were helpful for you? Yeah. So we used a lot of them, uh, and this was kind of one of the first projects that we as a company were, uh, were kind of getting to build our relationship with open space. So we were still, you know, I was always talking with y'all on you know, how to best use these tools. And one of the things that I really liked was the field notes report feature um, where we could go through again, you know, as you're doing your walks, you can pull out your phone and see something go, oh, you know, make a field note as you're walking super fast, super easy. Um, and then later you can go in and all those notes, uh, you can, you know, compile them together to report to, you know, have that report shared with the owner or shared with a trade partner. Um, a lot of times we would use it for, you know, general, you know, safety uh, 
uh, do's and don'ts and like learning items. And then a lot of it was semi punch list items of like you're saying the caulking um, where we had our cast in place concrete uh, meshing with our precast meshing with our steel. So it was very uh, complicated you know, joints and everything and really being able to, to capture that in um, both 3D with the 360 pictures and with the field notes and then be able to share that across the team unilaterally. That's huge, thank you. And, and you can see that with a field note, you're able to assign tags to those field notes. You can assign as many tags as you'd like. Um, these tags are customizable. You can also add people to the alert list, uh, meaning if you add someone to the alert list, whoever's added to the project will be available via drop down here, and then they'll get an email with a link directly to this field note. Um, so it sounds like when you were creating those reports, you would usually go in and apply a tag, or what did that look like for you? That's correct. So I typically tag it based off of uh, you know what scope of work it was, um, or if it was an owner item, then I, I would tag it you know with owner stuff, um, and then those reports are super easy to generate um, and then distribute to the team. Uh, we didn't utilize the, the shared folders as much because um, I was still trying to kind of learn how that functionality was, but having that uh, knowledge since then, having a shared folder um, for various reasons, whether it's you know sharing with your design team, sharing internally with uh, people that aren't necessarily on the job site at all times is huge. Definitely, and thanks for bringing that up. Shared folders is nice because you can be a little bit more selective about what you're sharing. Um, you know, if, if you know that a group or a person just wants to see a specific area, you can plug that capture in the folder, share it to them. You can also just share via a public link, making it easier for them to just click on it um, instead of having to log in. And then field notes will not ever be in a, a shared folder. So um, that's another benefit. Um, one, before we go into, I guess this is a good time to go into questions, but we'll stay here on this page just for this specific question from Thomas. Uh, I noticed that you, you asked, um, you know, how can field notes be taken? Is it just the person who's, who's with the, who's, you know, using the open space camera? And then Josh on our team already answered, but the nice thing about field notes is that you can be taking a field note while you're walking the space with the camera but you also don't have to have the camera with you. Anyone that has access to an open space project can take a field note if they have the correct level of permissioning. So you can take it on your mobile device directly on site, or you can take it on the computer right here where this plus sign is. I can just click plus. Wherever I click, we'll be taking a screenshot and then you, know, you can take your field note. You can also take it on your mobile device even if you're not on site. So great question. And thank you, Andrew. We'll go back into our slide deck. I think now is a good time for questions. Um, I see that we've we have a couple on oh, Thomas. Thank you. Perfect. Well, the, those three project highlights were really interesting. Um, I found them really cool, and I just appreciate you sharing how you're using open space with those projects. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of questions, but it seems like a lot of questions were also answered because you're you were all very thorough with sharing how you used open space, but Please, now is the time for questions. It doesn't have to be specific to what we just went through today. It can be anything open space related. Uh, feel free to type in the Q&A box or the chat box. Another great one from Thomas. Does, open does anyone use open space to track percentage of completion? Yes. So we. Um, we have clear site progress tracking. Um, would love to send you some more information and loop you in with our sales team too to, to share about how customers are currently doing that. But yes, we are absolutely doing that. <laughs> An anon anonymous attendee asked, what are the pen's current win-loss streak? <laughs> Andrea? I don't, I don't necessarily want to <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not not as not as good as I want. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and blame uh, injury and and sickness. So, sore subject. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so we have some really good questions here. 
Joshua, how many site members are generally active in a project? All or few super users, only GC or trades as well? Um, so we can, I can answer that, but I can also have Andrew, Pauline, or Jordan answer that. And I think it might be more interesting coming from, coming from one of you. Andrew, do you want to take this one? And Sorry, maybe how you question. I was, so how I was many, typing how, up a response to the field notes <laughs> thing. How many site members are generally active in a project? So all or few, few super users, only GC or trades as well? Um, well, that's the, the great thing about open space is you can really have those tiers. Um, so having the people walking around with the 360 cameras, typically we kind of keep that internal. Um, so we you know do regular walks, whether it's a superintendent doing the walks, a VDC person, a PM, um, one of our interns, or really anybody uh, doing the actual 360 walks. But everyone can really contribute with comments on field notes, um, taking field notes from their own phone. Um, everyone can really just have a lot of input with that. And you don't even have to have the, the app on your phone. Like, like we said earlier, you can just open up open space in a web browser, um, especially for our design team. That was super helpful. So they could get in there, make comments um, and make their own field notes uh, from their web browser. And Georgie, can I add to that really quick? Please, please. Um, so we actually even toyed around and we were just a little too far gone with our process at this point, but our architects actually have tried using open space to perform their um, quality control walks when, they're, when they are on site. Um, specifically just having that field notes function, it essentially can act the same way as plan grid tasks do. So we've toyed around with our architect actually using open space and performing their own walks and own own field reports as well. So that could be an option for some projects. Thank you, that's helpful. I think that that question also answered Jason's. Um, so thank you. And if it didn't, please let me know, Jason. Um, let's see, we've got a lot of really great questions. Uh, we'll go into Maria. What if the capture does not match the 360 degree model? How much time does it take to solve this? Um, usually takes three to four hours to originally align the model with the actual, with those captures. Um, if you're seeing that something doesn't match up, please let us know as soon as possible. Uh, support at openspace.ai. Also, with, when you're in open space, um, here is our little chat box. We have a really phenomenal support team. Um, so you just let us know if there's something that looks off to you and we'll, we'll go in and, and see what's going on. Uh, but we do have a partnership with Autodesk Forge Viewer. Um, and we accept pretty much any model type. And once we have a capture, uh, we'll work with your model. So just one model per project, fully coordinated model. And then you can continue to update that model uh, and just replace that model. And it will only work off of that, that one model that you, you've updated it with. Okay, so. Is there an ETI on the, on the release of plan grid integration? Great question. Um, our product team, this is one of the, the top priority items. We just had a meeting with them last week and plan grid is one of the first, first items that they're gonna be working on. No promises on exact timeline, but we hear you, we know it's important. So thank you for also addressing that. Um, there were some questions on LIDAR functions, functionality. So with the LIDAR scanning ability, um, I. I don't believe, Pauline, Jordan, Andrew, that you're using that on any projects. Are you yet? Uh, we are not currently that I know of, um, but I'm super jealous of everybody that has a LiDAR enabled phone because when that was first announced, man, that that is just awesome because being able to really get in there and actually have a LiDAR scan without having to, you know, get a, an actual laser scanner out to the job site and, you know, go through all that rig and roll, it's, it's, very handy to just be able to scan it with your phone and then pull it into a model um, and compare it to your real world conditions for coordination. Thank you, thank you. Um, I wish that we could send you a LiDAR, a LiDAR device, <laughs> maybe one day. Um, gosh, so many great questions. Okay, so if you're recording in an occupied area, can the software blur faces or remove people completely? Great question, Frank. Yes, so we can absolutely blur faces. Um, we do not remove people completely, but we can 
blur faces. If you need us to delete parts of a capture, we're happy to do that as well. Um, again, that would be either reaching out to your dedicated customer success associate um, or reaching out to support at openspace.ai. And then also whenever you're in open space, just talk to support here in the chat button. And then Paul, thank you. Uh, we're busy linking open space to OST, DBC for progress tracking, and are willing to share our experience. Um, we will definitely take you up on that, Paul. So thank you. Um, we had a couple of other questions about accuracy. Um, and I think our customers will be able to speak more to that. Uh, from what I've been, been seeing, the accuracy is very spot on. Um, so um, we're recording all of these questions in the chat box too. So we'll make sure that we're, we're gonna answer your question via email in more depth after the call. But Paul, thank you. Okay. Is the blurring of these faces automatic? Um, yes, so after you request it, um, give it about 30 minutes and then it will be blurred. Those faces will be blurred. So many great questions. Um, one thing you might want to tell them about is how you can store the file once you're done with the job so that you can either sell it to the owner or have it for your own quality control. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks, Jordan. Um, offline deliverables are huge. So being able to, at the end of the project, um, put it in a hard drive or request an online, offline de deliverable from us. That way the owner has access to it and they can always go back and reference it. Um, Jordan, can you speak a little bit more about how you've how you've done that in the past or yeah so uh open space for a building manager or somebody that takes a building after you're gone that wasn't here during construction that has to go back and do some repairs down the road if you can go in a room and click on the the walls and see the whole progress throughout it you know where exactly your water line is you know exactly where your heat and hot water piping is you know exactly where the duct work is so it eliminates all the need to go through there and cut walls or uh, destructive demolition to find something uh, it's just it it's an incredible tool to to have later down that road you don't have to look for pictures it's just you click in the room you do a 360 and then you do the side-by-side -side image and so you get back far enough to find what you're looking for thanks jordan yeah just to echo that it's it's the exact same format that you're seeing here none of this is being taken away And then a couple other questions about offline deliverables. What does that file type look like for a handover? Is it a single folder or an archive that needs to be re-uploaded to, up, to open space? Um, it's a zip file uh, that you can just share directly to the owner. Depending on how, how, how large it is, we're happy to work with you. Um, users that have access to open space to a project will, have, will be able to log in and view this project for up to 10 years after the last capture date as well. Um, but typically, zip file is the best way to be able to share that with an owner. And then we have some questions on spot robot for Andrew. Yes, I was, I was kind of hoping somebody would ask um, <laughs> with our background. Uh, we do have a spot robot and kind of the, the perfect marriage of technology that we're uh, looking at right now is having an automated walk path with spot so that even if it's you know a, a huge job site, um, we could eventually have sort of the same concept as I don't know if this is a different topic, but the drone in a box concept of you know having a box on the top of your job site trailer that has a drone in it that somebody remotely could you know hit a button and it goes and flies a map. Um, that same sort of thing, but with Spot, where say at night you know you hook up some lights to spot and while no one's on the job site, it can go through and capture or during the day, whenever it's you know a lunch break or something and really automating that capture. So that is a fully automated system that everyone can really participate in. You don't really have to worry too much about um, anybody taking time out of their day to do the walks, which I mean, 
even if somebody is doing the walks, it doesn't take a whole lot of time. But really having that next level of uh, automation is super exciting. Thanks, Andrew. And then Jordan, I think this one would be a nice one for you. Uh, we, we definitely touched on it, I think, but we could expand. Jackie asked how, how users can benefit uh, for a change order. So using field notes for change orders. Um, I think you use that a lot, Jordan, you know, if any, and also you, Andrew, um, with the design changes, but either of you wanna, wanna speak on that? How we use it is to just walk the designer through here and then um, show them field notes or show them the different conditions and generate change orders based on that. So for instance, what I was saying earlier is as you progress in the job, you can go back and say, hey, you know, why are we getting charged extra for this? You can go back to the image and say, well, it's different condition than the drawings. Pull the model up next to it. You pull the drawings up next to it. Um, I'm not sure. To answer your question, I don't really take a field note and then say, hey, you know, we need to build a change order for this. We kind of use it as a avenue on our job, an avenue to demonstrate that there is a different condition that we need to address or get it solved. And we submit an RFI and then get it document documented and proceed from there. Yeah, and I will say also um, field notes are a great precursor to those those change orders. Uh, we do currently have integrations with uh, BIN 360 and Procore. So, you know, while you're on site, you identify something you have questions with, you take a field note, you can link it directly to a Procore RFI or observation, either new or existing. Um, and same with BIM 360's issues tool, looking forward to being able to give plan grade users that ability too. Um, but I think that that really saves a lot of time being able to just have all the information in open space first, and then it'll be saved uh, in the attachments field in, in Procore or in BIM 360, soon to be plan grid. So that way the subs, anyone that has access to that in Procore or BIM 360 will be able to see that too. So can open space soft build relationships with the BIM model? Jackie, I wanna make sure I understand you correctly. Um, we, we can't help building the actual model itself, but we'll work with whatever it is that you have. Um, so we accept pretty much any model type. But I wanna make sure I understand if, if that's what you're asking. And then Joshua asked a really interesting question too. I actually wanna share my screen here for this. Um, he asked if you can save a preset, preset layout with all images of backing, even if they were captured on different days. I think sheet view really helps with that as well, but also a slightly hidden but important feature to, to point out here within open space is if you're on this, this plan here and you wanna see this area on another day, um, you can go in and see, okay, this is where this space was walked on October, October 7th. You're not going to see um, all of the walks here right in front of you, but I think just being able to go into this captures list and look at all the captures taken sequentially helps. And then also naming your captures uh, to be able to quickly find what you're looking for. I that, hope that answered your question. And then sheet view as well, just being able to go in and see the historical timeline of all of the captures taken. Thanks, Andrew. I see that you're asking Jackie a question about her BIM question. And then while we're going, going through any other questions, uh, really appreciate, I know some of you are dropping off. But it's the middle of a Wednesday. So thank you so much for everyone for joining. Um, I do just wanna say that everyone should join our open space community if you haven't yet, um, community.openspace.ai. 
Um, we'll send that in our recap as well when we're sending the recording. Um, but our next webinar will be in early 2022. So keep a lookout for that. And then I see we still have some questions. So I will still go through those. Um, okay, so Bobby asked if I take a field note, but the capture was yesterday, is there a way to assign the note to that capture? Um, absolutely. You can just go to the capture that you're looking for. I'm not going to do that on your actual project, don't worry. Um, but let's say we want to do this on you know, November 29th. You'll just be able to click create field note, take that field note, and then fill out any fields that are important to you. Getting some more clear site progress tracking questions. Uh, thank you, Joshua. I think it would be better if we actually sent you a more in-depth email just to, to, to speak more about uh, clear site progress tracking and maybe give you a demo. Um, so we'll be reaching out and connecting you with your account executive. And then I also saw that Paul is currently using uh, clear site progress tracking. So thank you again for offering to share your experience. Be looking for an email from me. Okay, I think the questions are dwindling down. Um, Andrew, Pauline, Jordan, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Um, this was really interesting and helpful, I think, for everyone on the line. And we'll be sharing this recording to everyone. Um, we'll also it will also live on the Open Space community. So please, if you haven't registered yet, uh, join the Open Space community. It's a great place to have conversations with other people in the construction industry. We also have people from our product team. A customer success team, everyone with an open space too. Um, thank you all and stay tuned for our next one. All right, bye everyone. <laughs>